Hi, welcome to Edward Box Guitar Tuition. So, got another classic album inspection for you today. Remember to share and subscribe if you enjoy these. And today, 29th of March, 1982, 40 years ago, the Scorpions released their seminal Black Art album. So this is a key album in the Scorpions catalogue and for some people their best, or certainly the best of the Matthias Jabs era. Um, so where the Scorpions at at this point? So they've had two albums that will eventually go gold with the Love Drive and the Animal Magnetism album in America. They're popular in parts of Europe, but they haven't kind of gone what I call over the top yet. But they will do so this album, it would be declared platinum in 1984. Incidentally, um, Scream for Vengeance is de declared platinum in 83. Black Eye 84, Number the Beast finally in 86. So those three 82 albums all going platinum uh, and being, you know, true sort of metal hard rock classics as well. But um, so basically uh, the gap between this and Animal Magnetism is two years. Uh, and the principal reason for that is, is Klaus Mein had nodules on his vocal cords, I think, or some kind of vocal situation. He had to have surgery and it was pretty serious. So in actual fact, I think Don Dockin did some of the demos for this because he knew Dear to Dierks. I suppose at this point as well, maybe we were feeling things out in case Klaus couldn't do it. But Rudy said basically, look, you know, we're waiting for Klaus. So this is quite a dangerous move uh, for Scorpions. That's a long time between albums. Um, back then, bands did albums every year without fail. If a band put out an album in March 1980, you'd get the next one in February, March 81. Sometimes they did two albums in a year. Saxon did 1980, for example. Um, but it probably gives them a bit of breathing space to craft the songs. Uh, and I think um, it probably gives Matthias Jabs as well more time to integrate and get his guitar style together that have been developing. So he'd done some solos on Love Drive, but hadn't really made an impact because Michael Schenker had done some of that. Animal Magnetism, he stepped up more with a, two or three really great lead breaks. But he comes of age with this album and earns his stripes as the German Van Halen. Uh, so what's the production like? It's recorded at Villa San Pecan, I think, Pecan, San Jacques Glach in France. Hopefully I've pronounced it all that all right. So they've obviously taken the mobile studio, Dear to DX's mobile studio there, to do that. Uh, and then they've gone to the DX studio in Stromheim, Stromheim in uh, West Germany to finish off. What's the sound of this album like? It's typical Scorpions. It's got very brassy, trebly guitars. Um, which is uh, the sort of typical Scorpion sound. They don't, um, you know, they don't have that kind of warmth that, uh, say, ACDC have or the bottom end of Judas Priest. Um, so, like, that means there's more space for slightly fatter bottom end and more bishy drums, as it were. Uh, so, the album opens with Blackout uh, and he sets out his stall really quick with this. Um, he's got a great vocal by Klaus. Um, you can see his voice is restored. And he's doing, still doing some of those kind of screams he was doing back on the Virgin Killer and Taken by Force album. Uh, this is where you notice Matthias Jabs, what he's kind of decided to do. I think it was Jeff Waters, I was reading the Book of Annihilator, said Matthias Jabs basically solos all the way through on his side of the speakers, and that's the genius thing. And yeah, what he's really doing, he's kind of playing a rhythm slash lead part and then breaking into fills as well. And it's most prevalent on this track. If you. The other thing with the Scorpions of trademark is they have real trademark. Sorry, is they have a really hard left and right panning. So you know if you go over to Rudolf Schenker's side of the stereo spectrum, you'll have trouble hearing Matthias, and vice versa. But if you want to hear the individual passes really carefully, just turn your stereo, um, you know, to left or right. But Matthias, yes, yeah, so he's he he blazes through with kind of lots of licks and fills, and he's a scorching solo. Um, uh, it's got a really cool end in this track. It kind of builds up into a frenzy. If I've got a criticism, and I haven't really picked up on it before, because with the Scorpions, I've always focused more on the melodies and the guitar, is Rudo, Herman Rareball's drums are very perfunctory. I think of every classic metal hard rock band, I think he is... I, mean, I don't dislike the guy. Um, he's Herman Rareball. He's written a lot of lyrics and a lot for the Scorpions. But his drums are kind of pretty basic... Um, you know, in a kind of slightly flat way. He's not like, say, Phil Rudd, where he's doing something simple, but just with an amazing feel. You know, there's nothing wrong with his drums. They do the job, they just don't bring anything to the party, you know. Uh, and I think it's like that all the way through the album. His, his drum sounds a little sort of, a little kind of bishy, bit bottomy. But um, 
you know, he was the drummer in the Scorps for a long time and they wanted to get a straighter sound. Um, in all truth, the Scorpions never really had a definitive drummer, I think. Um, when they got James Cotter and recently Mickey D, they kind of got guys who are recognised as like really top rock drummers. But anyway, that's sort of digressing on that. The next track's Can't Live Without, without You. Um, they don't really play this live now. Uh, it was a live staple, but I think it's because singing so high. But this has got a really cool inversion on the riff, so, um, you know, you would think in guitar speak, you'd think it was kind of like a sus4 type chord to the major chord, um, but it's not. He's kind of playing the minor triad above, like D minor to A, uh, and it just, um, the, the triads are stacked, I think, um, uh, well, the two parts are stacked um, across the spectrum, uh, and it just it's just got a kind of unique sound. Great fills on this from a fast and a really brilliant solo. I once uh, saw like um, a Guitar Hero's profile of my fast jabs in uh, Kerrang magazine, and he said this was his favourite solo at that time. Um, so this is a cracking track. Then another classic, uh, probably the, the most classic track off the album, No One Like You, comes in at number three. Really good. Uh, shows what the Scorpions do well, this track. Just simple power chords. Dun -dun. Dun -dun, you know, um, really breaks down to a lovely melodic verse with Klaus lovely singing uh, and uh, great guitar. Mr. Fast does a really cool solo on this, really tasteful. It shows a great touch. Um, Klaus Mind's not everyone's cup of tea as a singer, but I just think when it comes to melodic balladry, I just think he's, he's without peer. Uh, and his voice, he's got a high frequency his voice, but he's got enough balls in there uh, to, uh, you know, just give it some oomph. And I, I think he's one of the great, great hard rock singers. Um, love, love Klaus. Uh, track four is You Give Me All My Need. A bit more of a filler cut, this, but a good track. Again, sort of similar to No One Like You, really. Um, breaks down to sort of balladic verse. Um, simple um, sort of... Uh, kind of power chords but with a kind of tried shape on the top a bit like make it real I suppose um, it seems strange I'm having can't live without you no one like you and you give me all like you you give me all I need maybe they could have fought different titles but anyway uh, side one of the original vinyl finished with now this is the only track under three minutes um, you know this is the kind of track I liked when I was a kid but it seems kind of a bit uh, you know a bit more lame now it's like a party rocker some cool guitar work but this uh, kind of started a kind of formula thing for the Scorpions. So the next album, Love the First Sting, finished with the same thrill, which is a similar type of song. Then there's a song called Love on the Run on Savage and Movement, which is similar. Um, so it's all that. The side one kind of tails off in that respect. Um, but it's really built on the first three tracks. Um, side two's more consistent, um, although the, the tracks I mentioned before would be staples. So uh, side two, Open to Dynamite. Uh, so this is the only other track, only track over four minutes other than the track China White, which is six minutes, 59. So every track on the albums other than that is under four minutes. Um, it's 36 minutes and 44 minutes long. So again, one of those albums at the time, they, they you know, you can put it on and then you'll, you know, be in, get ready and you'll go to the pub. Um, yeah, so Dynamite's a great rocker, really cool riff on this. Amazing Matthias Jabs guitar solo. So he uses palm harmonics and loads of pinch harmonics, you know, uh, he sounds so bright on this and squealy. Um, a real live showstopper, this one, a uh, really catchy, great chorus. And then track number six is Arizona. Um, so this is a, a kind of deep cut, but a really catchy track, really nice sort of major key vibe on this. Um, uh, and lovely Matthias guitar, so lovely fills. Um, you know, it's a catchy track, um, one I really like. Uh, so the epic track, I previously mentioned it, um, is China White. So on the previous album, Animal Magnetism, the title track was kind of this slow, slow sort of Zeppelin-y epic. So this continues that, but it's, um, it's inspired by Kashmir. So I'm trying to think how, how I would explain the timing. It's kind of, to me, when I was listening to it, um, initially it's kind of 10 beats. Um, uh, and later on, you can count it in sort of three groups of three and a group of two, I think. Don't quote me. But the drums just basically play one, two, three, four, like that. So the way the riff loops, the emphasis on the drums shifts from the bass drum to the snare as the riff cycles. Um, and that's, they've got that off from uh, Kashmir. I don't know if I've explained that very well, but it's a really good track. Interestingly enough, there's two solos for this. So Rudolf Schenker in the same type of Kerrang um, 
feature I mentioned before, like the Matthias Jabs one. He said his uh, favourite solo was China White, um, but he wasn't sure which one to pick. So one solo went on the US version and one went on the UK version. And I've got to be honest, I only listened to US version before, quite by accident. It's a strange solo, the US one, quite atonal. Um, so I prefer the UK version, but I'm used to that. Um, this is a really cool track. Um, you know, it's seven minutes on, but it doesn't feel like it. it. It does that sort of European mysterious thing that the Scorps do well. Um, and then uh, following typical Scorps formula, again, which, you know, is sort of a problem. Uh, it started actually, uh, when did it start? Was it with Yellow Raven on Virgin Killer? Not sure. I think it's Yellow Raven, the last track on Virgin Killer. Anyway, Yellow Raven's a ballad. Taken by Force finishes with Born to Touch Your Feelings, that's a ballad. Love Drive finishes with Holiday. Um, that's a ballad. So they broke the mould uh, with the Animal Magnetism album, but they go back to the ballad on this and When the Smoke is Going Down. This is a lovely track. Um, it's got a powerful chorus. Um, it's maybe a track that gets forgotten about in the Scorps ballad. Uh tracks because there's that many of them but it's a really cool track and it finishes the album in nice style um you know if it was Martin this album out of 10 I'd give it eight and a half out of 10 um it is a classic record I think it's it's let down by the track now uh and you give me all I need is give you give me all I need is a kind of good filler track um but I think it's better than Love the First Sting as a older I get I like Animal Magnetism more than more but I think this album's got more consistency and better guitar work from Matthias but I'd still say Love Drive is uh, the 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 go to album of the Matthias era. Even though he he isn't as prevalent on that, the the quality of the songwriting on that is just spot on, and that's one of the great hard rock albums. But Key Year nineteen eighty two, Screaming for Vengeance, Number the Beast, and Blackout, uh, still albums that have been bought a day. Um, I think that's all you can say about this record. Really, um, you know, uh, it still sounds great today. It's got a clean, punchy production. Uh, it's got all the classic Scorpions hallmarks uh, and it's it's the album that made them the global act they are today. Cheers, thanks very much. See you soon. Bye.